go for the next part of the discussion here that is inertness inertness of noble gases inertness of noble gases first of all to take noble gases noble gases are also called inert gases inert gases they are also called zero group elements sometimes they are also called aerogens aerogens so for example these noble gases they are inert they are inert gases because they are uh, chemically chemically unreactive and they are stable they are always stable they, it is not easy for us to make the noble noble gas elements to participate in the chemical reaction because they have stable electronic configuration and that's the reason we say they are chemically unreactive and they are stable inert gases next zero group if you go for zero group all these elements they have their valency they are called zero group because they are called zero group because their valency is equal to zero their valency is zero their valency is zero because neither they lose the electron nor they gain electrons that's why their valency is zero then we are calling them as aerogens you call them as aerogens because of their availability availability in uh, atmospheric their availability in atmospheric air you know that air is a mixture and air air as a mixture contains when i say air here when i say air air is a mixture so it contains oxygen nitrogen then uh, carbon dioxide then hydrocarbons methane and mixture of noble gases so this is the composition of the air so we have to isolate all the gases which are present in the mixture so this is the composition this is the composition of air so what are the elements present in the noble gases for example if you take the elements of all the noble gases if you take you take these elements that is helium neon argon krypton xenon and of course radon one more element is there that is radon so he is for helium neon any neon then argon krypton xenon and of course that is xenon and last one is that is radon so if you go for helium in particular if you are going for helium writing the electronic configuration in helium the electron distribution is suppose if you are taking i am just going to mark it like this that is k l m n something like this if i am going to mark then we'll see what will happen here electron distribution the marking helium will have this is something like electron distribution k l m and n configuration configuration for helium if you take if you are taking for helium if you are taking for helium what you are noticing here is yeah 
So, helium only 2 electrons are filled up in the K shell, neon 2 electrons in K shell and 8 electrons in the L shell, argon 2 electrons in K shell, 8 electrons in the L shell and again 8 electrons in the M shell. If you go for krypton and one more thing, the atomic number of helium is 2, if you go for atomic number, helium is 2, atomic number of neon is 10, atomic number of argon is 18, atomic number of krypton uh, that is 36, atomic number of xenon it is 54, 54 and the atomic number of radon atomic number of radon is 86 is radon. So, what you are noticing here is 18 means atomic number 18 means neutral means 18 electrons must be there. Krypton 2 electrons 8 electrons again 8 electrons and you find that 18 18 18 of 18 uh, 8, 8 plus 8 16 16 plus 2 18 and I think another 18 electrons we can fill up in the valency shell. So, 18 plus 18 36 it is quite uh, adjustable. Then if you go for xenon this is 2 electrons again here 8 electrons 8 electrons then uh, 18 18 and I think we have to go for one more shell we need to go for one more shell that is MnO going for one more shell one more shell particularly in the case of xenon and uh, radon particularly if you take xenon and radon. So, I think if I am taking here 18 so almost uh, 18 plus 18 36 so 36 means 54 minus 36 is 2 this still we have to fill up 22 electrons you need to fill 22 electrons we have to fill up. So, 22 electrons will go to that is will go to the O shell. Then likewise you can go for radon this is 2 electrons 8 electrons then this is again 8 electrons 18 atomic number of radon is 86. So, 86 of 86 means already we have filled up 18 and I think this is 32 18 means already 36 are there 36 if you take yeah 36 if you are going to take maybe almost 50 electrons are coming here to actually the normal filling normal distribution for radon separately I am going to explain radon is 86. So, I will just take it like this 2 electrons 8 electrons 8 electrons 18 electrons and 32 electrons. So, 32 means if you add all this 2 electrons plus 8 electrons plus 8 electrons plus 18 electrons plus 32 electrons if you add total we are going to get 32 32 plus 32 64 you are getting 64 means I think you have to subtract 64 here. So, 64 if you are going to subtract subtract then you are going to get 2 here and this is 22. So, might be we have to take 32 electrons 5 and one more shell is there 1 2 3 4 5 one more shell MnOP also will be introduced only for radon the P, P orbital shell also P orbital is going to be introduced and that is going to become 22 electrons. So, total that is so what you are noticing here is particularly if you are taking helium it is having 2 electrons in the outermost orbit neon has 8 electrons argon has 8 electrons and even krypton also will have uh, 18 electrons in the outermost orbit. So, you are noticing that first 3 elements if you take that means if 2 electrons are there it is called duplet stability stability if 8 electrons are there it is octate stability and again one more 8 electrons are there again it is octate stability octate stability. So, in a nutshell what we have to understand is all the noble, noble gas elements either they acquire the duplet stability or they are acquire or they are going to acquire octet stability because almost all the noble gas elements in the valency shell either they should have 8 electrons in the outermost orbit or they should have 2 electrons in the outermost orbit. Only helium is the only element in the noble gas where it can have 
only two electrons in the outermost orbit. So, the valence electrons are two in the case of helium. So, it is acquiring duplet stability. If you go for helium and argon in particular, they have eight electrons in the outermost shell. So, the valence electrons are eight. Eight means they definitely acquire the octet stability. So, rest of the elements also, I suppose according to our convenience, we can understand that remaining all elements except helium, all of them, they are going to acquire octet stability because they usually have eight electrons in the valency shell. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.